This is a really old calculus book. It's called Calculus for Business, and it was written by Richard D. Anderson and Cecil L. Smith. And this is a book that I've looked at from time to time, and I think it's quite interesting because it's an easy book. This is a book that has really good examples, really good explanations, pretty good exercises, and some solutions. It's out of print, so it's kind of hard to get. I will try to find it, and if I can, I'll leave a link in the description, but it's pretty hard to find. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this book and look at some of the examples and what it actually contains. This is pretty cool. You can see it's an X library book, and you see the dates here where people have checked out the book. I always think about all of the people that have used this book to learn mathematics. Bell Laboratories Library Network. Calculus for Business, Richard D. Anderson and Cecil L. Smith. Very nice book. Very good quality pages. 1976, it's a pretty old book. I just gotta give it a whiff. Oh, smells so good. Let's take a look at the contents of this book. Chapter one is an introduction, so you can see some of the topics there. Chapter two is on limits of sequences and functions. The asterisk means that it's an optional section. Chapter three is on the derivative. So those are common topics that you would see in a Calc 1 course. Notice the asterisk next to related rates. That's something you definitely cover in a Calc 1 course, but the author is treating it as an optional topic in this book. Here you can see some more optional topics which are covered in calculus courses. For example, Newton's method is something you study in Calc 1. Then it has exponential and logarithmic functions. Then over here we have the integral, seven more integration, eight is on partial derivatives. So this is something that's not typically covered in most business calculus courses. Most modern books on business calculus do have this topic, but at least in my experience, it's not something that's usually covered. It even has Lagrange's method. And then it even has differential equations, which is pretty nice. And it has answers to selected exercises in the back of the book. The book has these charts, which you can use to help you learn. It says, begin. We must begin with the formula for f of x. Replace x in the formula for f of x by x plus h to obtain a formula for f of x plus h. Substitute the formulas for f of x and f of x plus h into the formula. And that formula is called the difference quotient and then obtain an alternate form of that formula that is not indeterminate for h equals zero. And then evaluate the limit. The result is the derivative stop. So it does that a lot. It gives you the steps so that you learn calculus. And if that you feel that's something you need, then this is a pretty good book. In my experience, people who take classes on business calculus because the prerequisites are lower and these people have had less mathematics, they need books like this. This is a good book for the target audience. And that also means that if you're a person who is into self-study, you basically want the easiest book possible, right? Because you want to learn. And this is such a book. Pretty cool, here's another chart. Here's some of the exercises. So you can see that they're pretty simple it says obtain the derivative using the definition. So x plus one is an easy example. However, they do get harder. <laughs> so x cubed, one over x squared. Yeah, pretty cool. And you have a lot of exercises, certainly not as many exercises as you would find in one of those you know, really, really big, thick calculus books, but you do have quite a few. Here you can see the answers, and it seems like it provides the answers to the odd exercises. I'm sure there's some missing, but that's pretty much the standard in calculus books. They give you answers to the odd numbered exercises and there's usually a few missing. Here's the flow chart for finding the extrema of a function on a domain D. So if your function is continuous on a closed interval, it's gonna have an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. That's by something called the extreme value theorem. And it gives you the steps, find all the critical points, evaluate f of x, at each critical point and identify the largest of these functional values. It says if f of x has an absolute maximum, it is the largest of the values in block three and the corresponding critical point is a value of x that yields it, stop. So you can do the same thing for the minimum as well. And then here it has an example. So a good book for learning calculus really and it has good examples. So I think this is worth getting if you can find it um, again, I'll try to find it and leave a link in the description. 
This book is long out of print. I'm sorry, I just have to smell it. Oh, it smells so good. And these business calculus books, again, I think are really good for beginners. And it's not something that people really think about because when you see a book like this, you think, oh, calculus for business, you know, why do I need that? I'm gonna be an engineer, or I'm gonna study computer science, or maybe I'm gonna study math. Why would I want a book that is on calculus for business? And the answer is because the explanations are usually a little bit more gentle and a little bit more clear. You get better examples, you get these flow charts, at least in this book, which is really unique, and you get a good selection of exercises. Let's just take a quick look at this example. So here we have an example of U substitution, and it's a definite integral, so they change the limits of integration. Look how clean this is. It says, let U equal X squared plus two X. Then DU is two X plus two DX. So that's the entire denominator there. And then because it's a definite integral and you're making a U substitution, you're supposed to change the limits of integration. So it says when X equals one, so you plug it in here, so you get one plus two, so U is three. When X is two, so you plug it in here, so you get four plus four, so u is eight. So you start with your original integral. Notice how he puts x equals one and x equals two just for added clarity. It's not really necessary, but he's doing that just to emphasize that these limits are x limits. And then over here, when you make the substitution, you get u limits. This is a very famous integral. One over u is gonna give you ln u, and you go from three to eight. Then you just plug in the numbers and subtract, and there's the answer. This step from here to here is using the quotient rule of logs. So it's just nice that the book has examples like that. And that's just one example. A lot of them are like that. And look how gentle this is. It actually gives you the substitution. So the level of difficulty in a book like this is easy, right? It's easier than other books. At the same time, you do have some harder examples. For example, the section where he discusses maxima and minima and concavity is pretty detailed compared to some of the other books. So yeah. You just get a good mix with, with a book like this. Also, because this is a business calculus book, you do get specific topics in this book that you won't find in other books. For example, it talks about marginal cost, and it talks about marginal revenue and marginal profit. So you get different types of exercises that you normally don't see in a regular calculus class. In a regular calculus class, you spend more time on related rates and other types of optimization problems where if you took a class using a book like this, you would see these business specific applications, which are kind of fun. But yeah, really nice book. Overall, I think this is a really good book for beginners who are trying to learn calculus or anyone who is trying to learn calculus because it has good examples, good explanations, and a nice set of topics. If you happen to be in a business calculus class, then obviously it's a great book. But if you're just in a regular calculus class or you just wanna learn calculus, it's a pretty good choice. It's called Calculus for Business and it's by Richard Anderson and Cecil L. Smith. And again, I'll try to find it. I don't know if I'll be able to. Look at this. Cover, Relief Etching Energy, Marjorie Morrow. What a, what a weird cover, right? Really interesting. Anyways, it's a cool book and I just wanted to show it to you because it's one of my many, many calculus books. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck and take care.